Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I'd like to answer today a question that I get very, very frequently uh, in bankruptcy consultations, and that has to do with uh, your stuff. Uh, and the question really is, am I going to lose my stuff if I file bankruptcy? Am I going to lose my house, my car, my furniture, um, my sporting goods equipment, my cameras, and so forth? Um, and generally, in a bankruptcy, you're not going to lose your stuff. Obviously, it depends on what kind of bankruptcy you file, but, but generally, uh, most people end up not losing their stuff. And the reason for that is uh, something called the exemption rules. And in Georgia, uh, the exemption rule is set out, or exemptions meaning property you can shelter or protect. The rules for exemptions in Georgia are set out in the Georgia Code. This may seem a little unusual because bankruptcy obviously is a federal law and you'd think that there would be federal rules that cover this and there actually is a federal exemption law, but Georgia has opted out of the federal uh, exemption law, which states are allowed to do, and Georgia has its own exemption code. And I've posted a link to that to that code. You can actually read the statute. It's at section, uh, Official Code of Georgia, section 4413-100. And if you look at the code, you will see that you can shelter the many things, um, but the main ones that I'm going to go over uh, that I would say you can shelter are $10,000 of equity in real estate. Uh, $3,500 of equity in a motor vehicle, $5,000 of equity in household goods, $500 of equity in jewelry, $1,500 of equity in tools of the trade. Uh, you can shelter pretty much 100% of the value of your 401k or your uh, IRA, any type of, uh, of what they call RISA. Um, controlled pension plan, meaning that it's there's a prepayment penalty you get taxed on it if you try to take it out early. Uh, that's going to generally be 100% exempt. So you could have 50 or 60 thousand dollars in your 401k or your IRA, and that's going to generally be exempt. Um, and there are other exemption categories that are a little bit less common, but the main ones I've gone through. And if you're filing jointly with your spouse, uh, you would double this. So, uh, for example, for a, 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 a husband and wife filing, you, the two of them can shelter uh, $20,000 of equity in real estate and uh, $7,000 of equity in motor vehicles, et cetera. Um, the other thing about exemptions is you can do some what, what is called exemption stacking. And what that means is that uh, one of the uh, things in Georgia, one of the, the rules in Georgia says that if you don't use your real estate exemption, you, you don't use all of it, you can take up to half of it and apply it to some other category. So for example, if you don't have a house and you've got a vehicle that's worth $5,000, you can take the $3,500 real estate exemption, then you can take another $1,500 from your unused uh, real estate exemption, so $3,500 of the motor vehicle exemption, $1,500 of the unused real estate exemption, and you can combine them together and shelter the full $5,000 value of your vehicle. So you can do that, and again, you can take up to half for an individual $5,000 of unused real estate exemption for a couple, $10,000 of unused real estate exemption, and apply it to something else, uh, which is helpful, even cash. So if you have $5,000 in cash, no real estate, uh, you can shelter $5,000 of cash. Um, or you can shelter a tax refund, which a lot of people uh, obviously try to do. Um, so that's basically how the exemption law works. Now, I mentioned in my definitions the concept of equity. And what does equity mean? And that is your ownership interest. So for example, if you have a vehicle that is worth $7,000, um, but there is a $2,000 lien, in other words, the finance company has $2,000 of, of claim against that vehicle, that's the remaining balance, uh, there's only $5,000 of equity. So what we're focused on is what you actually own, what you would get if you sold the vehicle. Vehicle. And of course, that brings up the question of what is a vehicle, what is a house worth? Um, for vehicles, um, you can look at the NADA, uh, which is a, on a website, NADA.com. Uh, what I typically do is I'll recommend to my clients they take their vehicle to CarMax and get a written uh, offer to purchase. CarMax will do that for free. I think other used car dealers will do that for free. And now you have a written offer, which is a pretty good evidence piece of evidence as far as the value of your vehicle. Uh, for real estate, I will tell my clients to call a local agent, have them come by and give a drive-by appraisal. You don't need a formal appraisal, but you need something in writing to indicate what the value of that, that house is. Um, tax 
valuations don't really say very much because generally trustees in bankruptcy are not going to consider tax uh, valuations as being an accurate representation of value. Usually tax valuations are, are low. Um, of course, in this economic climate, they may be high, but I generally like to get some sort of a, um, a real estate agent to come by and give me a, a drive-by appraisal. Uh, that usually will suffice, although realize that trustees have the right to send out their own appraiser or agent to give a valuation uh, of, your, of your real estate or really any, any other kind of assets. So first thing we do is we want to identify what we can shelter and we go ahead and shelter uh, that asset. Now in Chapter 7, um, if your, all of your assets are sheltered, uh, then your case would be called a no-asset case. Assuming there's no other problems, you'll get your discharge. If you have non-exempt equity, meaning if you have, let's say, a car worth $5,000 and you can only shelter $3,500, there's a $1,500 non-exempt equity portion. What would happen in a Chapter 7 is that the trustee would ask you to buy out the estate's interest, meaning that you would have to actually pay the trustee uh, $1,500 or some negotiated figure, which would then be used to uh, he would, he would use that money, he, he would pay back creditors based on a certain priority kind of order. So the trustee would actually seize money um, and buy out your interest. If you were not willing to buy the trustee out, then the trustee would actually take the asset and sell it. So it's very, very rare, but it does happen. Uh, but generally, if you go into a Chapter 7 and you have non-exempt assets, um, usually what will happen is um, you'll enter into negotiations through your attorney to buy the trustee out of the estate's interest and typically you'll get six months or a year uh, to pay the trustee his interest in that property. So it's not an immediate type of thing. And normally if it's two or three or $4,000, it's something you can probably work out. Uh, if it's more than that, uh, it may be a, a situation where you got to negotiate. And I've actually been involved in cases where um, I've litigated uh, before a judge the valuation of property uh, to challenge the trustee. The trustee argued it was worth X. I thought it was worth Y. And the judge had to make a decision. And we would actually bring in, in my case, I brought in a real estate agent to testify, this is what I think this is worth. Um, and that was sufficient for the judge. And he actually found it in my favor in that case. So that's what happens in a Chapter 7. In a Chapter 13, if you have assets that exceed your exemption, in other words, this non-exempt property, uh, what happens then is that you, your Chapter 13, you would have to pay back your unsecured creditors in the 13 at least uh, the amount of money they would get if, if the case was a Chapter 7 liquidation. So, for example, um, if you have $10,000 of non-exempt equity, then your unsecured creditors are going to have to get, uh, in total, are going to have to get $10,000 uh, to distribute amongst themselves, or the trustee would distribute it to them. Um, so it's going to have to be at least a, ten, uh, a plan that pays back uh, $10,000. Um, so if you have uh, $20,000 of debt, uh, then that $10,000 payout is going to be 50 cents on the dollar or a 50% plan. If you have $10,000 of debt, um, then the $10,000 non-exempt equity is going to be a 100% plan. So the percentage plan you have is going to really determine uh, what the percentage plan is going to be determined by your non-exempt equity, among other factors, but that's basically how that works. So this has been a brief discussion of the exemptions uh, that exist in a bankruptcy case. As I said, you are not uh, generally going to lose any property in a bankruptcy. Uh, however, uh, you should be aware of what the valuation of your assets, what it is, be prepared to have proof of that. Um, but if you play your cards right and you have a, an attorney who's capable and who understands how exemptions work, you should not uh, give up any property unless you voluntarily wish to do so. So I hope this has been helpful in explaining about assets and about keeping property in bankruptcy and reassuring you that you probably will not lose any property when you file bankruptcy. Uh, feel free to email me or call me. Contact information is on this site, and I hope to hear from you soon.